Good evening. Hey, we're so glad that you are, are here with us tonight. I mean, tonight is, is just a night where we're just going to converse with God, basically. And it's for us to first do that in prayer, um, and praising Him, uh, and, and just join together, united as, as one body here at Burnside. So um, tonight, we, we kind of have a theme night here, and, it, and it's unity. We, wanna, we want this to be all about unity and being united together. You know, we face so many things, and and we continue to do so that, that divides us. Um, divides us as individuals, as families, uh, communities, and a nation, and throughout the world. But really, as, as Christians, um, we need to place a priority in being united with other believers. Um, and so, uh, we're going we're gonna to read, we're going to select some theme verses, and we're going to read those together. I was going to ask that you read those with me. Um, they're going to be on the slide here uh, in a second. <coughs> That's Philippians 2, 1 through 4. Do uh, read that way. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, make my joy complete by thinking the same way, having the same love, united in the Spirit, intended on one purpose, do nothing of selfish ambition. But in humility, consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look not to his own interest, but rather to the interest of others. And so, to get started, we ask uh, Doug Jacob to come forward, come forward and pray. Will you please pray with me. Dear Lord, we do just uh, we thank you for this time, and we thank you for those who made the effort. Uh, tonight to come out and uh, pray this time will be a blessing to them, Lord. Just pray that this uh, these, this next uh, time we spend, the hour, however long it is, that it, uh, if we can focus on you and just how good uh, good you are in our lives and, and, and just uh, the blessings we have uh, of uh, belonging to you and, and uh, of being your birth side. Just be with us in, in our time to come. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Thank you, Doug. Would you please stand on your feet tonight with us? One thing about unity is we're talking about it is that unity begins with us as an individual. It begins with you. Uh, it doesn't begin with the other person. It begins with you. And so these first two songs we're going to sing tonight are really a perspective of love. Uh, it's kind of doing some self-evaluation. So uh, we're going to make these first two songs kind of our prayers here tonight for us. The first one is Lord Rainey.
tonight as we're talking about unity, uh, specifically right now what I want us to focus on is unity for our church. And as our minds are dwelling on unity for Burnside Christian Church specifically, I want to ask you personally, uh, what are some barriers to unity? I want you to think about that. I want you to uh, meditate on that. Because in just a moment, we're going to sing a, a familiar song uh, that we really want to make a prayer tonight for our church. It's a prayer that God would open the eyes of our hearts to the things that are preventing unity from happening here at Burnside Christian Church. Because after the song, we're going to invite you to come to the cross. And as you notice, there are tables with pieces of paper on them. And we're going to give further instruction in just a little bit about that. But uh, as the song is sung, as we sing it together, uh, let this song just resonate within our hearts and let it focus our attention to um, maybe what we've been guilty of in regards to creating division and not getting along. And uh, we're going to have a time of uh, uh, confession of that with before the Lord here in just a little bit. Uh, let's sing this song this, uh, tonight and make this your prayer. had some time to think about it what are some barriers that are preventing unity from taking place and more specifically and more personally and more directly 
How have you participated in not promoting unity? As we knew we were going to kind of be putting this together, I've uh, done some um, searching of myself. I knew I was going to be introducing this station and, and knowing uh, what we were getting ready to do and, and kind of been evaluating my life. And um, maybe you're like me. Maybe one thing that you have a hard time with and getting over is some bitterness maybe that has happened with somebody in the church or maybe somebody who no longer goes to church here or maybe you come to church here because of something that happened at your church elsewhere and that bitterness isn't healthy and that unforgiveness isn't godly. Or maybe you have pride in your life or maybe uh, you have um, whatever the case may be. You name it. What we're going to ask for of you tonight is that as you have time to let God's Spirit convict you of your part in division and not promoting unity, we're going to ask that you're going to see two tables on either side of the cross. There's papers, uh, there's nails, and there's markers. And what we're going to ask you to do here in just a moment as the music's played is to come forward as you feel led and to write down uh, something that you know you've been clinging to, something that's been preventing you from being united with your brothers and sisters. And uh, we're going to ask that you write that down. And if you're worried about people seeing it or recognizing handwriting, uh, you can write with your opposite hand. But they're all going to be folded. So when you're done writing it, you're going to fold it over, fold it in half. We're going to ask if you would take a nail. And there's some hammers down here in the front on the stairs. We're going to ask that you just nail it to the cross. To bring it to the cross because the cross is uh, where it dies the cross is where it loses power the cross is where it's forgiven and so LJ is going to be playing some music here and we want to ask you just take your time with this we're not in any rush we're not in any hurry uh, have a good conversation with God here in this moment and maybe confess to him and repent of that at this time
stand again with us. We're going to sing a song called Goodness of God. And, I mean, God is, is just good and he's faithful in our life. And, and those things that we wrote down that, that we nailed to the cross, and we have such, serve such a wonderful God that, that we can leave it there at the foot of the cross. And he can break down those barriers that, that, we, that we have in the way that keeps us from uniting. If we just continue to pray to him. chapter 3 and, and 4, we, we, we get this amazing story of how the, the Israelites um, came together um, and, and how they come together to, to, to build this protective layer around the city of Jerusalem. Uh, in chapter 3, it, it describes how um, every family, each of the families, uh, took a portion of the wall as, as their priority to build up for the betterment of everybody else. In Nehemiah chapter 3, it lists out each family that did that and, and where they, they served in that. 
And in Nehemiah chapter 4, then we, we see that, that there's some turmoil that, that comes in from the surrounding areas where, where they're, they're, they think they're going get, to get attacked by some people. So Nehemiah instructs the people to continue to build, but to do so with a sword in one hand and their tools in the other. And, and they took turns keeping watch over, over each other to protect one another. And then we see later on in the book that it only took 52 days to build that entire wall around Jerusalem. It's an amazing thing. Uh, what they could do as they, as they worked together when they focused on, on the task at hand. You know, walls offer protection. Uh, they give us security and, and comfort. And, and for the nation of Israel, with walls around Jerusalem, their hope was renewed as well. Uh, one, one thing I, I just think about is just this rocks. You know, every rock is just unique in and of itself, right? They, they all look different and they all feel different. They're all shaped different. And yet they took these things and they built this one wall to, with that. And likewise, like we're, we're all unique individuals. We have differing talents and abilities. Uh, we have different giftings from God in that. And alone, we're just a rock. <laughs> we're, we're nothing. Uh, we're just there. But when we're together, when we're united as one, like we're, we're unstoppable. When we're united as one, we, we have security and we have comfort. And when we're united as one, we have hope. And so at this time, we're, we're going to have a, another station over, over here um, for you to, to go to. And, and as we do that, um, it just uh, take a moment to, to pray. Pray about how God is using you and how you can use your abilities and your talents uh, to, to offer hope, but, but to offer hope in a united front here at Burnside. And so when you, when you go to the station, there's, there's piles of rocks on each end. And so we're going to encourage you to go over there and, and, and grab a rock and, and dip it in some liquid nails and then place it on that wall that's, that's there, that little wall that's there. Um, and, and have it stick there and, and kind of stack the rocks on top of each other as if we're building a wall. I, I then encourage you to, to grab a rock and, and take it home with you as a reminder. Uh, in, in ancient Israel, there, they would set up stones all over the place as reminders for people. And so take that, that rock home with you as a reminder that, that alone we're nothing, but together, like when we're united, like some amazing things can happen. We can have support. We can have comfort. And we can be the hope into the world that we're called to be. And so the prayer at, the, at this time is, is, is that, that we pray, pray to God that he uses our talents and our abilities to build unity in our congregation and in our community.
And so far tonight, you know, we've had you moving around after a moment of prayer and hopefully of reflection and, and different things. And, and this station is going to be a little bit different. We're just going to stay where we are and we're going to remain seated. But we're going to read through um, a passage of scripture together. Uh, after we read it through, then we're, we're going to pause for just a moment and then we're going to turn around and we're, we've kind of changed a little bit of the language to make it more personalized to us. And we're going to break it down and we're going to, we're going to pray for something specific within those verses. Um, there's going to be a prompt on the screen for that. Um, and then we'll, we'll read, we'll continue on reading in that, um, if that makes any sense. So if you will read along with me from 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 17. Now I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, that there be no divisions among you, and that you be united with the same understanding and the same conviction. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by members of Chloe's people, that there is rivalry among you. What am I saying? Is this. One of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in Paul's name? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did, in fact, baptize the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't recall if I baptized anyone. For Christ did not send me to be but to preach the gospel, not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ will not be emptied of its effect. All right, we're going we're gonna to back up and read that uh, once more, and you're going to see some of the language is a little bit different on the screen. Will you read with me? Now I urge you, Burnside Christian Church, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of us agree in what we say, that there be no divisions among us, and that we be united with the same understanding and the same conviction. And so take a moment and, and just pray uh, you, that pray for um, our unity and our doctrine that holds true uh, to the word of God. And also pray that we, we let nothing divide us as a congregation. Chloe's people, that there is rivalry among you, 
What am I saying is this. One of you says, I belong to Paul, and I belong to the Paul's, and I belong to Cephas, and I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? So we ask you to pray for the unity of all believers under Christ. Almighty God in heaven, we just thank you and praise you for your son. We praise you for the gift of eternal life that we have through him. Father, I pray that as a body, as a, as a, as a group of believers who, who gather under one group, who gather under one name, Jesus, I pray that we are united in that. Father, I pray that our efforts to, to be the light of the kingdom of the world, as we build your kingdom here on earth, Father, I just we pray that. that we don't do anything we have our selfish ambition, but rather we do so because of our love for you and our love for people. Father, forgive us when we, when we get in the way. Forgive us when 
in our own ambition, our own pride, our own selfishness, whatever it is, gets in the way. Um, help us to be, be builders of the walls. The builders of walls that, that can be a beacon for your, for your kingdom and your life. And we don't want anything, anything to get in the way of that message of hope that you have. And we don't want anything to have a deep, deep loss that it's effective. And so tonight we just confess those things that, that get in the way, and tonight we just praise you for who you are. Would you stand with us tonight, and we're going to be ready to sing a song, a, a final song before we're dismissed here. Uh, thank you guys for coming tonight. I, I want to do something that we did not talk about in staff meeting, Matt, and I hope it's okay. Um, uh, I, I, was, I was sitting here thinking about this wall we were building and, and things like that. I was reminded of a verse out of uh, Habakkuk and uh, Habakkuk ch chapter 1, actually. And I preached through these verses several years ago, but it just resonated with me. And I just want to read uh, verse 3, and then I'm going to talk, and then I'm going to read verse 5. And it just says, destruction, and he's complaining, by the way, uh, to the Lord. He's looking around, and he's thinking, man, God, where are you? Uh, this whole thing is just a mess, and it's fallen apart. And he says, destruction and violence are before me. There's strife. And conflict abounds. And uh, I've been around Burnside not as long as most of the people in this room, but I've been around long enough to do something that I never thought I would do, and that is to look in the rearview mirror and think, man, the good old days. A and be tempted to think that Burnside's best days are behind us. And I just want to encourage you that if that's where you're at, if you're thinking that Burnside, man, it was good back when in the prime, but we're past the prime, if you're tempted with that, uh, like I have been lately, I want you to listen to God's response. He says to Habakkuk, he says, look around, for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. And I know that that's a promise to Habakkuk, and I know that that was a promise to the nation of Israel, but I don't think that promise is lost on Burnside Christian Church. And so I believe that we serve the same God that Habakkuk served, and uh, I know things have been rough, and uh, we look around and the church seems a little empty, but I want to remind you in this, I, I reminded this to our elders uh, last week, uh, that did you know Hancock County has over 17,000 people in it. And then if you added up all of the average church attendance of all the churches in Hancock County, you know what that means? It means we got some work to do. It means I've got some work to do, and it means you've got some work to do. There are people who are not in relationship with Christ. And if we were out uh, doing the work that God called us to do, uh, this building couldn't handle it. All right? The staff we have couldn't handle it. And so tonight as we get ready to depart, I want to celebrate God because I know that our God is truly capable of doing something that we wouldn't even dream possible even if it were told to us. So let's celebrate God tonight.
again for being here tonight. In just a moment, uh, Wayne Caparoon is going to close us out in prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. But before you leave here tonight, back on that, there's going to be a table that is lit up in the back with a lamp on it, and there's going to be some cards there. We want to make sure that each person, and I know, don't take one just for your family. Take one for each person in your family. There's enough there. Uh, and place it around in places in your home, in your car, uh, wherever you're going to find it each and every day and be reminded of what Philippians chapter 2 talks about this evening. So I'm going to turn it over to Wayne and uh, just let Wayne close us out in prayer. We come to you tonight and thanks. Thankful for this service and for to be here with our fellow believers. Thankful for the freedom and the privilege that we have to gather and pray to you. Father, tonight we ask that you lift up our country and our fellowship here at Burnside. Help us to heal the divisions that threaten to destroy the unity as, that we share as a nation and as your church. You did not make us so that we agree with every detail of everything, but help us to find a common purpose in lifting Christ up. Help us to show his love and compassion in our families, our, our uh, congregation, our community, and our world. And it's in your son's precious name I pray. Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. <clears throat>